Hello and welcome to Ace of Smiles. Thank you for joining us. Today is May 23rd, 2024. And you just heard an excerpt from a piano violin piece written by my youngest son, Tyler. Um, and I just love including those because he's such a brilliant and talented writer. Um, composer so have so much fun with that hold on just a second there folks okay so anyways we're doing a uh, tribute today to Namus and every year on May 25th Namus observes National Missing Children's Day which is a day dedicated to highlighting the urgency of protecting children and reconnecting missing children with their families. And I got to tell you, this is really an important day that needs to be celebrated because, uh, you know, it's amazing the work that goes into uh, working on these cases of our missing children. So we really want to make sure that Saturday we take a minute to stop, pause, and reflect and think about the missing children that are out there and the families who are desperate and um, just beside themselves, not knowing what to do. Um, and it's important that NAMA celebrates this milestone every year as well because uh, they are huge in helping uh, solve these cases. So um, it's important to uh, highlight the crucial role that NAMIS plays in supporting these investigations. So it, it is huge. So let's talk about it. I, I did a little bit of research on it. Um, and so uh, NAMIS is the nation's only centralized federal program that provides technology, forensic, investigative, and analytical services to resolve all long-term missing and unidentified decedent cases, including those of juveniles, okay? So, right away, when someone goes missing, the first place, besides the police department, that this information goes to is in NAMIS. And, uh, so... There is more than 24,400 active missing person cases in NAMIS. And 24% of those are juvenile. <clears throat> this is in addition to their support of 1,278 active unidentified decedent cases involving children. So, let's think about that for a minute. <clears throat> what is so unique and amazing about NAMIS is that uh, it's a website of information. And it's a website of information for law enforcement. It's a website of information for organizations such as JC Cares USA. And it's a website of information for the public at large. So let's think about what you can find out and discover on NAMIS. Or NAMIS, whatever you like to call it. Everybody pronounces it different. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, I used to always say NAMIS because I felt like if you were on NAMIS... Then, you know, uh, I would always reference to name us. You have unidentified missing persons or unidentified decedent persons on the website. Please name us. That's how I've always felt it was. 
Other people call it NamUs. I go back and forth. Uh, NamUs, NamUs, whatever. Uh, okay, so... Um, this website provides information such as who's missing, where, what they were wearing, on and on and on. And uh, every missing person gets turned into that, into NamUs, and then uh, they... All that information goes on their website and organizations like mine or public persons can go on there and look. And you'd be surprised, honestly, how many um, arm armchair investigators we have that um, spend time on NamUs and... They go through photos and missing persons flyers and they, you know, on and on and on. And they try to match up missing person flyers to um, the decedents that are listed on NamUs. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, you know, you know, there's a lot of people out there like, oh, these are just busy body nosy people that have nothing better to do. You know, Kens and Karens, whatever you want to call them. But that's not true. There are lots of good people out there that uh, spend their free time because they're interested in uh, investigations in one form or another. They like to spend their free time working on this stuff. And honestly, I applaud them. As long as they're not doing anything that compromises the case or the information involved in the case I say why not it's when you have people who do that or try to get involved and then they go on social media and they put out incorrect facts and you know start sensationalizing stories to um, get clicks and and uh, you know, do their thing that is concerning. But there are lots of armchair detectives out there, armchair armchair investigators, uh, I should say, um, that like to look at this stuff. And I say, if you're one of those, get on NamUs and uh, start looking, comparing photos and to missing persons flyers. It's very easy to do. You just look at a certain area. And then start looking at decedents that have uh, been listed from the different areas. Oftentimes it includes photos if there's photos available so that you compare them, can compare them. So if you have an opportunity to do that uh, and you like doing that kinds of thing, I say go ahead and do it. Because uh, you never know what uh, you might figure out that would be helpful to law enforcement or NamUs or an organization like mine, JC Cares USA. So, anyways, uh, I enjoy um, getting messages and comments from people talking about different things that they have helped with and, um, and what they were successful in. Excuse me. Trying to get the hiccups here. I'm trying to avoid them. <laughs> so, okay. Um, what else can we say about NamUs? Um, since, since the inception of NamUs in 2007, it has assisted with the resolution of more than 7,300 unidentified person cases and 43,160 missing person cases. 47% 40 of the latter involved juveniles. Um, and more than 20% of the identifications 
NamUs has made indicated they were resolved using DNA, forensic genetic genealogy, dental fingerprint, uh, anthropological or radiograph comparisons. So that's a lot of testing that NamUs provides to families of the missing. And um, that's important. That's really important for all human beings, um, not just children, but all human beings and especially children. So as we come up uh, on observing National Missing Children's Day, um, it's important that we acknowledge the support and ongoing work of NamUs and its partners. Um, and, you know, the journey to bring our missing children home is fraught with challenges. That's a quote from NamUs. But with continuous technological advancements and collaborative efforts... There is renewed hope that all unidentified children can be reunited back to family. Wow. That's, that's uh, pretty amazing. And you know, honestly, would you consider all the uh, different organizations that have uh, arisen out of these... Uh, different tragedies uh there has been a lot of organizations that have really made a difference in uh helping to find missing children um and uh these organizations are reputable strong and hard working um and there are other kinds of organizations that have come out of this, too. Um, you know, such as, let's say you're a person that's being convicted, been convicted of a crime um, against a missing person or child. And, um, and you weren't the culprit. You were uh, convicted wrongly there are organizations out there now that are able to assist people who have been wrongly convicted uh, for a crime they didn't commit and you know all of these organizations and NamUs and etc they all help and assist in making sure that that doesn't happen and when it does happen to right the wrong so it's really important to give uh, the creators of NamUs the accolades that it deserves because it's really assisted in a lot of uh, cases being solved. And uh, so um, I know one of the one of the uh, organizations that has arisen to help people who have been wrongly convicted um, is the Innocence Project, of course, and uh, they're another great organization out there to help uh, people who have been wrongly convicted. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff that these people cover that work at NamUs and the creators of NamUs. So, um, but as far as missing children go, let's look at some of the missing children um, organizations out there that are reputable. Uh, we kind of talk a little bit about those in other podcasts, but we'll just name a couple um, right now for the purpose of this podcast because we're remembering uh, National Mission Children's Day on Saturday, May 25th, okay? So, 
Of course, at the top of the echelon is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The NCMEC um, is the nation's largest and most influ influent influential <laughs> I'm going to spit it out, you guys. Uh, child protection organization in the country. And um, and in the world. All over the world, I believe. So, um, so that's one place that you want to start when it comes to a missing child, right? Uh, the Ride for Missing Children is pretty cool. Um, they've been around since 1984, um, and they do, they're derived from the NCMEC, um, and they do charitable rides, and, uh, they're a non-profit helping to find children. Um, there's also Find the Children, it's a non-profit organization, uh, dedicated to the recovery of missing children and the prevention of child abduction, which is very important because honestly, I would rather prevent it than have to deal with it after it's happened. Let's just put it out there like it is. All right. So th another one that we have, and this one's another one that's at the top echelons up there with the NCMEC. This is the Global Missing Children's Network. And it is the ICMEC. It focuses on programs that have an impact on addressing the complex issues surrounding missing children, child abduction, child uh, sexual abuse, different things like that. And it's global. And they also have a database of photographs and information about missing children in their countries. Um, you could create missing children posters on their website. And you could search by country uh, where you would like to um, search. So the ICMEC is really a good place to start um, if you want to get your stuff on globally. If you're concerned about your child having been taken out of the country, out of the United States, this is a good place for you to have your information. And I can tell you that um, they have loads of information on there. So if your child has been adopted abducted by uh, another parent and taken to another country this is where you want to go and get your information about your children on that website so that investigators in that country respective country can uh, see that that is a indeed a, a missing child so that's the ICMEC, okay? And they're the Global Missing Children's Network. Uh, GlobalMissingKids.org, okay? You can find that. Um, we have the American Association for Lost Children. It's a, a charity that uh, physically goes out searching for children and rescuing mis missing children so that's a another organization that is really up there in the top echelon if you go to their website um, they they actually have videos of children they found um, you can make a donation on their website you can make clothing donations on their website you can volunteer on their website you can donate old cell phones they have a store there's so much that they have going on 
that's the AAFLC, American Association for Lost Children. Um, and then there's the oh, who else? We got Child Find of America. That's a good one. They're another top echelon. Um, they search for missing and abducted children. Um, and they work on preventing and resolving family conflicts that can lead to child abduction and abuse. Such as, uh, you know, you and your spouse aren't getting along. So your spouse disappears with your children, goes to another country. Or just disappears in our country, in the United States, and then nobody knows where they're at. These people are really uh, skilled at working on finding resolutions for those people. Not just parental abduction, but let's say you have a 13-year-old daughter who is just mad as can be at you and um at their parents and and decide they're going to run away and then when they run away they get picked up by a trafficker and then i mean it's just because we know the statistic we talked about that right the first 48 hours that they're missing is crucial because in that first 48 hours they will be approached by a trafficker, by a recruiter who's recruiting for traffickers. Um, we've we followed one case that uh, we did ex we do because you know I've said before we don't do a lot of missing children's cases because there's a lot of resources out there that are a lot better for handling children. However, we do work on cases of like teenagers, um, runaways, trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. And we do have a case where, um, that we've been working on where we know that this young lady was involved in some way or another with a trafficker. And it happened very quickly. And, you know, we've been able to trace and look at the fact that uh, this person, you know, was basically getting rich off of trafficking. Another person that we know that was getting rich off of tra trafficking that's been in the, the spotlight, well, two people, is... Epstein and Maxwell, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, were uh, not only victimizing children, but getting rich off of it. They were paying recruiters to bring them children. And those recruiters make a lot of money, a lot of money. Upwards of, I think we said in our last podcast, of like 400000 a year. It's a lot of money. And, uh, and these people have no conscience because they don't care. It's not their children. It's not their children. It's not their life being ripped apart. So they don't care. It's all about greed and money. And drugs and etc. So, <clears throat> again... These are some really important uh, organizations out there helping with uh, bringing these children home. So I hope that all of our listeners will spend uh, Saturday, not the whole day, but just spend a couple of minutes on Saturday to stop, think, and reflect on our missing children in this country and all over the world for that matter. Um, children are just that. They're children. They're babies. They're, they're uh, 
they're not old enough to make the right decisions or to even form those kinds of thoughts or they can't even be uh they can't even have common sense because they're not able to form those thoughts yet of what is right and wrong so um you know, when you have a young lady or a young man, 13, 14 years old, that disappears at the hands of a recruiter, it's not crazy that that happens. It happens a ton every single day. Every single day, someone in this country, well, more than one, but let's just say every single day, someone in this country is terrified right now as we speak someone has no clue what happened to their child or where they went or who took them and they're terrified so please take a few minutes on saturday to reflect on that and say a prayer or send some good juju or good vibes or whatever you have um, to all the families out there. And I thank you for doing that. So um, again, I just, I want to give a lot of recognition to NamUs for being a leader in missing person cases. Um, again, if you are one of those people who has time that you would not mind uh, volunteering for an organization such as JC Cares USA. Um, we do have a vetting process that we go through, but we would love to hear from you. And it um, doesn't matter where your feet stand at in the world. If you're, you know, interested in helping certainly reach out to us you can reach out to us at our website jccaresusa.com or you can email us at jccares91 at gmail.com or you can call us at area code 929-406-3527 follow the prompts leave us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible if you are a listener who has a missing loved one and you are interested in talking with a family support liaison from JC Cares USA, just give us a call at 929-406-3527. Follow the prompts, leave a message, and a liaison will get back with you as soon as possible. Other than that, I say, as always, to be kind, kind, kind. Kindness does matter. It does. Please be kind to everybody you meet. And always smile. Because it's contagious, folks. It is. Try it. Just smile at a stranger on the street and watch what happens. They will smile back and they will remember that smile. So everybody give it a try and uh, let's work on making this world a better place, right? Again, we thank you so much. So long for now. We love you. Bye-bye.